And joining us is uh, George Farrell. Uh, George is the author of the best-selling book, uh, The Angry Black Man Guide to Success. George, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, David. Thank you for calling me. I'm an honor to be with you today. Uh, George, uh, I, I don't know if you had an opportunity to watch the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the trial today. There's been some developments. The defense is now putting their case forward. But you've seen the events unfold. You, you saw uh, uh, the first, uh, the fir first uh, witness for the prosecution was, was supposed to be a, a star witness, Rachel Gentile. A lot was made about, about her attitude and how some whites might not like her. This is, of course, a murder, tr murder trial, isn't it? How important is that? It is a murder trial, and, and I, I actually uh, resided in Florida for a minute, and, and I can understand Rachel. It, English was not her first language. She's not very comfortable with it. She's in a location she doesn't want to be in. Um, and coming from her neighborhood, uh, law enforcement doesn't always mean you well. So I can understand her attitude. Unfortunately, she should have been schooled better. But I also understand that she speaks uh, French Creole, Spanish, which are her first and second languages, and English is her third language. So she's not really com uh, comfortable speaking in English. Uh, I think a lot of people made too much of it, uh, uh, about her, her attitude, uh, because in the area where she was raised, uh, she was not raised in a, in a, in a multicultural community. You know, I mentioned earlier, uh, George, that you know, if this had been a uh, if this had been a trial between uh, you know uh, you know a black man and a black man, we probably wouldn't even be talking about it, or a white man and a white man. But the fact that race is involved here, and uh, it it's become a big issue, and the media is obviously playing playing up the card. I get the fact that you know, she, one, she's a teenager. Teenagers uh, don't always do the right thing. Uh, maybe they have an attitude. Uh, I know my son certainly had an attitude when he was a teen teenager. But again, this is a murder trial. And a lot was said about the cross-examination by the defense, uh, you know, of Rachel Gentile. And, uh, but isn't it appropriate, you know, to question the validity, the validity of a witness, the credibility of a witness in a murder trial? Uh, a man's reputation is on the line here. Uh, that's, that's his job. And his job is to make her uncomfortable to make her seem like she's untrustworthy. Uh, he, he's, that, that is this job to get his client off. So he's going to use everything in his ability to get her off, even if it makes it seem like uh, she's against the world. And, and she already had that, that attitude. He just pushed it a little bit further, which was his job, in order to make her seem like she cannot be trusted. Uh, but again, I think people are a little harsh because they're, they're judging her as if she, English is a first language, as if she's been in a professional atmosphere before. This is probably the, the most professional atmosphere she's ever been in. And, and who wouldn't be nervous uh, being in the courtroom? I don't look forward to any police, any police actions, <laughs> not even a traffic stop. <laughs> so. Well, I've had a traffic, tif, tra traffic ticket, uh, George, but let me, let me go to the prosecution's case here. And, and they've, already, they've already completed their case. They've rested their case. And uh, do you feel they did a good job in humanizing Trayvon Martin? Yes, I wrote about that. I write for communities at the Washington Times, and I wrote about uh, that they, they were looking to dehumanize him, make it seem like it was okay to, to, uh, to murder a young kid. I mean, you're right about race. If this was a, a, a white youngster walking down the street, uh, would he have even been approached? I, I don't think so. Um, and that's where race really comes in. It starts where this actual case starts. Uh, if it was a group of Latino kids walking through the neighborhood, not even a group, but one Latino kid or, or one uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon kid or white kid, would Mr. Zimmerman have been so hostile? Would he have been so hostile to feel that he actually needed a gun? Um, and I, I think that's where this case starts. Why did he actually even need a gun to, do, uh, uh, to walk through his own community? Was it that dangerous? Was it, I mean, this is a gated community. How dangerous could it have been that you need a gun to walk around a gated community? This is, of course, uh, George, it, it translates beyond the courtroom. And, and these issues, these race issues we deal with on a daily basis uh, across our country, um, you know, I guess this will unfold, and I guess we're still trying to heal the wounds, but we seem to keep trying to open up the wounds. Certainly the media does this because it's ratings. It does boost the ratings. Is there anything we can do to help prevent that? Well, that's, that's something that uh, hopefully this country will get over. 
I, I don't think it will. I think, um, and, and this is in my book. I wrote the book, The Angry Black Man's Guide to Success, to give African American men the armor and what how to deal with this situation. But when you're a child, the police harassment actually never stops throughout your life, no matter what level you're on. When you're a child, it's the police officer on the corner. When you become a professional, you become more successful. The law enforcement group changes to the FBI and the IRS, which I consider IRS and a police enforcement agency. Understood. But when, when, whenever a uh, African American entertainer or any professional becomes worth more than five million dollars, and I say this in my book, you become a target. For now, instead of the police officer on the corner, it's the Internal Revenue Service that said, "Hey, this African American earned more than five million dollars. Let's go take that money back." It, it, it's just been a system of containment for African Americans throughout the history of the United States of America. I in guess that, I guess we're going to have to deal with this, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately with events as the, like this as they unfold. George, uh, thank you so much for for your time. We really appreciate it today.